What's up guys, Garrett Crawford here, and we're gonna do a deck tech over Edgar Markov. What's up guys? So, Edgar Markov, uh, Mardu Commander. He has the ability called Eminence. So, for the most part, whenever I cast a vampire spell, I create a 1-1 one, one black vampire creature token. He's got first strike and haste, and then whenever he attacks, I put a plus one, plus one counter on all my vampires. Very, very busted card if he's able to swing into the open field. Um, he's relatively easy to cast at six, um, even with the triple coloring there, so I don't think it'll be too big of an issue. Most of the time, uh, you can just keep him in the uh, command zone and just ap apply that eminence ability. So anyway, let's get on with the deck. First off, we have two drops. We have Tith Drinker, uh, basically lifelink and then extort. We got a Lord with Legion Lieutenant. Uh, other vampires you control get plus one, plus one, and it's a two drop, so very nice. And then Blood Artist. So whenever a, another creature dies, that's any creature on the battlefield, target player loses one life and then I gain one life. So uh, crazy, crazy mechanic here. Um, if your opponent's trying to go crazy with a bunch of like sack outlets, this card's like, hey, you better slow down. So, uh, love that card. And then you have your bunch of your own sack outlets, too, that you can apply uh, to get that thing going, along with all of the combats, and yeah. So, next card, we have our three drops. We have Rackish Air. Whenever a vampire you control deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So, this is like a little mini Edgar Markov. Stormkirk Captain. First Strike. Other vampire creatures you control get uh, plus one, plus one, and First Strike. So, really good lord. Captivating Vampire, another really great lord, uh, but this guy's extra broken in my opinion because you can tap five vampires and just gain control of target creature. It gets vampire in addition to its other types. Uh, that could be really powerful. You can steal like the biggest creature on the board just by uh, having so many little one ones. Uh, and then on top of that, you don't need to tap him at all. You can actually tap himself to pay for the cost. And yeah, so crazy. This guy can literally come in and immediately tap out the board, take something. And then it'll get a plus one, plus one because it's a vampire. <laughs> Next up, we have Drana Liberation of Malakir. Flying first strike, 2 3. Great stats on a 3 3. Uh, whenever Drana Liberator of Malakir deals combat damage to a player, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each attacking creature you control. So again, that Edgar Markov Anthem uh, counters effect is. Basically what I'm going for with this build, make everything just really, really hard to deal with. Next up, oh, we'll do this one first. Drana's Emissary, so flying at the beginning of each upkeep, uh, each opponent loses one life and I gain one life. So really good in tandem with Vito. So whenever I gain life, target opponent loses that much life. And then he tap five and creatures I control gain lifelink until it turn. So you can imagine this guy is basically a win condition in himself. And then uh, paired up with uh, abilities like this can really just kind of put a clock on the board for everybody. It's like, hey, you better deal with this or I'm going to win the game. And then he's not really a vampire, but he is a vampire, but he's not a creature. So, yeah. Sword Imperius Bloodlord is amazing. You can neg three him immediately when he gets onto the board and just drop whatever vampire you want from your hand. Super, super broken. He also has a plus one that can give something death touch and lifelink. And if it's a vampire, you get a plus one plus one counter on it. You can also sacrifice a vampire, deal three damage to anything, and gain three life. So Soren has a lot of utility. I really feel like he's a staple in any kind of vampire deck. Now we're up to the four drops. We have Alenna the Dusk Rose. Whenever another creature dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Alenna the Dusk Rose. Then if Alenna dies, I can create X11 vampire creature tokens with lifelink where X is Alenna's power. Super great card. This card literally can win the game because of the lifelink, and if she stays on the board long enough, she can just be gummy big. So she's a thick old girl, she's my favorite girl. Favorite artwork for vampires, really, like, she's super, super beautiful card. Next up, we have Twilight Prophet. This card is another really busted card that goes with Vito. Um, it's flying, it also has a send, so if I have the city's blessing, I can reveal the top card of my library. Each opponent loses X, I gain X, where X is that converted mana cost, so CMC. Uh, in Commander, getting City's Blessing is not an issue at all. Uh, and then Twilight Prophet with Vito can literally just end games on its own. So then we have Sangromancer. Sangromancer uh, basically says whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, I gain three life. Great. Again, with Vito, we're constantly killing stuff. Whenever an opponent discards a card, you may gain three, gain three life. Now that ability is kind of niche, but 
it could come in handy if uh, I'm playing like against a cycle deck or anything like that. So uh, yeah, very optional card here. Along with this one, uh, Emberstorm Predator, it's flying whenever it enters the battlefield, or sorry, whenever it becomes tapped, my apologies. Exile up to one target card from a graveyard and put a plus one plus one counter on Emberstorm Dragon. You can also sacrifice another creature and then tap him, and he gains Indestructible. So that'll also trigger his first ability, along with him attack, attacking, will also trigger his first ability. So a uh, super good card here with Emberstorm Predator. He's also a Vampire Dragon, which I think is a hilarious, hilarious typing. So uh, anyway, yeah, good card. Also a very optional slot. And then the last, or sorry, we have a couple more four drops, sorry. Uh, we got Kaliter, 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 Kalidus, Trader of Get. He's lifelink. If an opponent control, if an opponent uh, has a monster that would die, I can exile it instead and create a two-two and put it on my battlefield. That's a zombie. Um, I can also tap a black and two colorless, sacrifice another zombie or vampire, and put two plus one plus one counters on Trader of Get. This card can get out of hand. This card is great against recursion decks. This card is great about just getting certain things out of the way. Uh, so yeah, Kalidus is super, super busted in that uh, regard. Blood Tracker uh, basically can just pay two life and pay a black, put a plus one plus one counter on him. And then he dies. If he dies, you get to draw cards equal to the number of plus one plus one counters on Blood Tracker. Vampire Nocturnus can play with a top card of my library revealed. And as long as it is a black card, he gets plus two, plus one, and flying. Super good. Also kind of lets you look into what you're going to be drawing next as well. Edgar Crooned Charm, uh, a Lord, and then whenever he dies, I transform him. So the transform side is an artifact uh, that basically says at the beginning of your upkeep, you can create a 1-1 one, one white and black vampire creature token with lifelink. Uh, super good for the cause. And then you put a bloodline counter on Edgar Markov's uh, uh, coffin. Uh, I think it's one it has three. You can flip it back to this Edgar. And so yeah, Edgar kind of is just one of those cards uh, in this in this rendition where he's just kind of hard to get rid of. Uh, super great. Now we're onto the five drops. These ones are a little bit simpler. We have Bloodline Necromancer. Uh, whenever he enters the battlefield, you may return a vampire or wizard creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Enough said, man. Enough said. Uh, Blood Lord of Vaga Vasgoth. Uh, he's got Bloodthirsty 3, so if an opponent was dealt damage this turn, this creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus, plus 3 plus 1 plus 1 counter. So this guy would come in as a 6-6 six, six with flying, and then whenever you cast a Vampire Creature spell, uh, it gains Bloodthirst 3, if, which is basically his ability. So this guy, whew, let me tell you, um, especially if you're pinging with like Drana's Emissary, this thing will get the board out of hand. So dumb. Malakir Blood Witch. So, flying and protection from white. Super good uh, in certain situ situations because I feel like most board wipes are white. Uh, when Malakir Blood Witch enters the battlefield, each opponent loses life equal to the number of vampires you control, and you gain life equal to the life lost that way. So, again, if your board's really just kind of out of the out of, out of of nowhere, like it's just crazy, bunch of build up, uh, with Vito on the field, that could be a one-shot. <clears throat> Next up, we have Anawan, the Rune Sage. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player sacrifices a non-vampire creature. This is a way for me to keep my opponent's boards in check and to apply pressure. Next up, we have Bishop of Rebirth, so Vigilance, and then whenever she attacks, I can basically reborn something with uh, converted mana cost three or less. So this can bring back Vito, this can bring, up, bring back Drana's Emissary, a bunch of my uh, utility that I used early on in the game. Champion of the Dusk, whenever he enters the battlefield, I draw X cards and lose X life, where X is the number of vampires. So this guy's a good way to just reload my hand, and he's pretty good stats. We got Blood Baron of Viscopa, lifelink protection from white and black, as long as you have 30, more, 30 or more life, uh, and an opponent has 10 or less life, it gets plus 6, plus 6, and has flying. So this thing can get really, really big. 10-10 uh, if uh, somebody's way too down on their luck. And uh, this guy can literally close the gap. Bishop of the Bloodstained. So whenever Bishop of the Bloodstained enters the battlefield, target opponent loses one life for each vampire control. Another another great card. We got Vana, Butcher of Magus. Uh, Vigilance and Lifelink. 
I can pay seven life, destroy target non-land permanent, and I can only activate this turn uh, during my turn. So uh, really good card here. If I got a bunch of life, I can just throw away. I can just get rid of a bunch of uh, annoying permanents my opponents have. We got Patron of the Vein. Great, great card for this deck. Whenever it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls. And then whenever an opponent controls, uh, whenever an opponent's creature dies, I can put a uh, exile it and then put a plus one plus one counter on each vampire control. So again, that Edgar Markov ability is super, super key for this deck. We want to just be able to make everybody big. Uh, love, love this card. Olivia Crimson Bride, Flying Haste. Whenever Olivia Crimson Bride return, uh, attacks, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Tapped and attacking. It gains whenever you don't control a legendary vampire. Exile this creature. So this thing, this is really busted. This this is this card is almost a win con on its own because you can just keep chucking it in and pulling stuff from your graveyard. So um, I love it. I love it. Uh, next up, we got Lys Lysia, Sanguine Tribune. Uh, she can cost one less to cast for each life I've gained this turn. That come, that that shows up a lot. So a lot of the times, I can cast her for three. So great with that ability. And then uh, pay five life, put three plus one plus one counters on her. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what else do you say? Uh, super, super crazy card. And then our last creature is Butcher of Malakar. Uh, basically, whenever Butcher of Malakar or another creature you control dies, everybody's got to sacrifice one. So again, this is another way for me to basically keep my opponents in check uh, without having to destroy my own board. So uh, after that, let's get into the enchantments. Next up for the enchantments, we have Blind Obedience. Uh, it's got Extort, super amazing. Artifacts and creatures your opponent can control enter the battlefield tapped. Uh, this is great because it kind of slows some of my opponents down and uh, allows me to set up. Um, then we have Black Market. So whenever a creature dies, put a charge counter on Black Market. And at the beginning of my pre-combat main phase, add Black to your mana pool for each charge counter on Black Market. Super crazy card, um, especially with so much stuff that's going to be dying. This this whole thing will get charge counters um, quickly. Super quick. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, all of the black mana will get dumped into more and more creature spells. Um, next up, Sanguine Bond. This is basically like Veto. Um, this and Veto is a one-shot. It'll kill everything. It'll kill everybody on the board um, because it says whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. And then um, I want to say Veto. Veto, where are you? And then Veto will say whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. So, yeah, basically both of them on the field can just, like, kill people. It's really dumb. Access of Immortality. At the beginning of your upkeep, upkeep, you may have two players exchange life totals. This is super funny because I could let somebody get beat up on the board, and then whoever's running in charge, I can just play this, and at the beginning of my upkeep, bam, it's like switch your life totals. If you can't get rid of this card, now you're on the fence, and most likely I'm swinging at you. Then we have Debtor's Nell. Uh, basically a kind of like slow roll version of putting stuff on the field from like, as opposed to like Olivia or anything else. Um, so yeah, put target creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Yeah, at the beginning of your upkeep. Uh, this is a good way for me to bring Olivia back, and then chuck it, grab another... Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty self-explanatory there for the most part. All right, and then next, next up we have the instant and sorceries. Uh, we have dark ritual, read the bones, mortify, vindicate, chaos warp, crackling doom, consuming vapors, return to dust, silver quill command. New Blood. Uh, this card is super dumb uh, for the fact that it's a four drop that you can just sack a vampire um, and then take control of target creature and then change the text of that creature by placing all instances of one creature type with vampire. So like, uh, for instance, if I steal something and it's like every time a dragon attacks, uh, this card deals five damage. Uh, it'll switch that around and basically turn it over to vampires. Um, this card is kind of situational, but it is super good if you just hit it on the right creature. Uh, and then we have Fell of Fell the Mighty. 
Uh, I did include one board wipe. Blood Tribute, which is a really good way to just knock off somebody's life, especially with Veto or Sanguine Bond on the, floor, on the field. Merciless Eviction is uh, super good because it's really, um, you can target exactly what you want to get rid of. In most cases, I noticed in playing in cubes, it's enchantments that I want to get rid of, though. Uh, Planner Cleansing, another board wipe just in case. And then we're on to the artifacts. So the artifacts we have... Skull Clamp, uh, this is one of the sack outlets, or sorry, this is another utilization um, towards the sack outlets because if something was uh, equipped with this, it dies, you draw two cards. Uh, Blade of the Blood Chief, so whenever a creature dies, put a plus one plus one counter on equipped creature, and if it's a vampire, put two plus one plus one counter. So this is another way just to single out some big baddie on the field that can't die as easily, and then uh, yeah, just chuck it out there. <clears throat> then we got some mana rocks. We got uh, Soul Ring, Boros Signet, Orzov Signet, and then Rakdos Signet. Uh, you have to run these, in my opinion. If you're not running these, then uh, you're going to be really slow and really behind. Along with uh, Worn Power Stone. And then the last two artifacts we have are Pyre of Heroes. This card is busted in this deck. This is basically like a birthing pot. I love it. Uh, the fact that we're running levels 2 to 7... It's super easy for you to sack a 4, get into a 5, sack a 5, get into a 6, and you can just pull your answer straight from the deck with this card. So, super, super amazing. Love this card. And then Vanquisher's Banner, another really amazing card. Basically, whenever you... Uh, this gives, like, each one of your... This replaces each one of your vampires that you play, essentially. You cast a vampire, you draw a card. So, it replaces the card. And then, it's a lord on top of that. So... Super, super amazing. Now let's get on to the lands.